In this video, we will uh, discuss a property of the Fourier transform, which is that uh, multiplication of two signals in the time domain uh, corresponds to the convolution of their Fourier transforms in the frequency domain. And uh, this property can be applied to, uh, to understand the modulation property of the Fourier transform as well. And by modulation, we mean uh, transforming a baseband signal into a band pass signal that is uh, producing frequency translation in a signal and we will discuss more on that later and uh, basically we are going to use this property of the Fourier transform along with another property which we have discussed in another video uh, that the convolution of any signal with the delta function produces the same signal that is the delta function is an identity for the convolution operation and uh, extending that idea further, the convolution of any signal with a shifted delta signal results in the same signal also shifted uh, in the same direction and amount as the shifted delta function. So you're going to use uh, these uh, properties, that is convolution, uh, multiplication in the time domain is convolution in frequency domain, along with the fact that the delta function is an identi identity for the convolution operation to illustrate and prove the modulation property which produces uh, frequency translation. So uh, to perform modulation, what we do is uh, we multiply a signal uh, x of t with another signal called the carrier signal uh, which has a certain high frequency f sub c. So the second signal y of t with which we are going to multiply that is our carrier signal and we will begin our discussion by considering the carrier signal to be a, a complex exponential signal e power j uh, 2 pi fct where fc is the carrier frequency. Now uh, the signal x of t which is our uh, modulated uh, modulating signal uh, let's consider that to be, to be an arbitrary baseband signal which has some Fourier transform denoted by x of f and uh, by baseband we mean its spectrum x of f is centered on uh, zero frequency and let's say the signal x of t has a bandwidth uh, of w hertz as we will see in our illustrations as we go along so now when we uh, want to affect modulation by multiplying our signal x of t with uh, with the carrier signal e power j 2 pi f c t in the frequency domain that will correspond to the convolution between the spectrum of x of t which is x of f and the uh, spectrum that is the uh, Fourier transform of e power j 2 pi f c t uh, to produce the convolution between them right now what is the Fourier transform of this e power j 2 pi f c t we use the general expression for the Fourier transform which is given by this integral and we denote the Fourier transform for the carrier signal y of t as y of f and this integral uh, once we simplify this we get it as uh, integral e power uh, e to the minus j 2 pi f minus f c t and we use the fact that uh, integral e power minus j 2 pi f t uh, dt is delta of f and uh, using this relationship in place of f we have f minus f c uh, in this integral over here so we just replace delta of f with delta of f minus f c so wherever we have f in this integral we have f minus f c so the result instead of being delta of f is delta of f minus f c so that means this is uh, an impulse uh, delta function uh, uh, where the delta is at the uh, frequency value f c so that is a right shifted delta function uh, shifted to the right by an amount fc. So now uh, that we have the uh, Fourier transform for the uh, complex carrier signal e power j 2 pi f c t uh, in the frequency domain uh, the multiplication in the time domain corresponds to uh, convolution in the frequency domain uh, between the corresponding Fourier transforms. So x of t has Fourier transform x of f and this e power j 2 pi f c t has Fourier transform delta f minus f c so we perform the convolution between them and uh, using the fact that the delta uh, function is an identity for the convolution operation uh, the convolution between x of f and uh, delta f minus f c is nothing but the same x of f shifted uh, in the same direction and amount as this delta function so 
the convolution between x of f and delta f minus fc is simply uh, x of f minus fc, which is nothing but x of f shifted to the right by an amount fc. So we can uh, see that illustration over here. So we have our uh, baseband signal uh, x of t, which has Fourier transform x of f given by the, this representation, some arbitrary spectrum. Uh, and we say that the bandwidth of the signal is w hertz. That means the, uh, the range of positive frequencies has a width of w hertz. So that's the bandwidth of our baseband signal. And since we are producing modulation by multiplying the, uh, the baseband signal with the carrier signal, in the frequency domain, we have to perform the convolution between uh, the Fourier transform of x of t and the Fourier transform of e power j 2 pi f c t and the Fourier transform of e power j 2 pi f c t which we obtained earlier as delta f minus f c is nothing but a delta function at f c that means the delta function shifted to the right by f c so we have a delta at f c with a height of 1 so uh, performing convolution with between x of f and this delta of f minus f c will give us the result of the modulated signal uh, and that is uh, x of f minus fc which is clearly uh, the same x of f shifted to the right by an amount fc so that is why we have this as x of f minus fc so uh, that's the effect of uh, modulation by multiplying the uh, signal x of t with the carrier signal of certain high frequency fc we see that the baseband signal which has a spectrum centered on zero has been shifted to a right uh, to the right by an amount fc and it is now centered on this carrier frequency fc and uh, now we also notice that the bandwidth which is the range of positive frequencies uh, present in the signal uh, is uh, doubled in this case because the highest positive frequency is fc plus w and the smallest positive frequency is fc minus w so the bandwidth is the highest positive frequency minus the smallest uh, positive frequency which gives us a bandwidth of 2w for the modulated signal so we see that modulation has produced frequency translation which means that the baseband signal which was centered on zero frequency has translated or shifted in frequency by an amount fc which is the carrier frequency okay so now we have seen this example uh, of modulation and we have utilized the uh, two properties of Fourier transform and, uh, and, and also a property of the convolution operation. Uh, the first property is that uh, multiplication in the time domain is convolution in the frequency domain. And also we have used the fact that the uh, delta function is an identity for the convolution operation. Now, however, in the real world, when we perform modulation for the purposes of communication, uh, we don't usually uh, we don't use, use a, a complex exponential carrier signal, but rather we use a real carrier signal. So, what happens uh, to the uh, spectrum of the modulated signal uh, when we use a carrier signal which is a real signal rather than being a complex signal? So let's consider the carrier signal y of t to be a real signal cosine 2 pi fct where fc is the carrier frequency again. Uh, but instead of uh, the previous case where we had a complex signal, we now have a, a real signal of the frequency of c. So now to produce the modulation, we multiply our modulating signal x of t with the carrier signal y of t in the frequency domain that corresponds to the convolution between the Fourier transforms of x of t and y of t, which is the convolution between x of f and y of f. Now, uh, what is the Fourier transform of uh, y of t equals cosine 2 pi f c t? So let's evaluate that first. Uh, the Fourier transform is, uh, by the general integral for the Fourier uh, transform, uh, we have y of t equals cosine 2 pi f c t, and uh, we will use Euler's relation to expand uh, cosine 2 pi fct and represent it in terms of the complex exponential. So we have cosine 2 pi fct as uh, e power j 2 pi fct plus e power minus j 2 pi fct, the whole divided by 2, but the two factor, uh, 1 by 2 factor, I've taken them separately here. So we substitute this in place of the cosine 2 pi fct in this integral and uh, evaluate this integral and use the fact that 
uh, like that we have seen earlier uh, that the integral uh, e power minus g, j2 pi ft uh, from minus infinity to infinity is a delta or uh, delta function at f okay delta of f that is uh, whatever is that f value so if we look compare that with that integral uh, we see here that it is e power minus j 2 pi f minus f c t so that corresponds to uh, delta of f minus f c because in place of f we have f minus f c so that's delta f minus f c and we have this 1 over 2 factor which we can take outside the integral so <clears throat> we have this integral evaluating to uh, half delta f minus f c and similarly here in place of f we have f plus f c so we get this as delta f plus f c with this half factor so the uh, Fourier transform of uh, cosine 2 pi f c t is a delta function at f c uh, with, an, with an amplitude of 1 upon 2 and also a delta function at f equal to minus f c uh, with an amplitude of 1 upon 2. So now uh, in the frequency domain, we can perform the convolution between uh, the Fourier transform of x of t, which is x of f, and the Fourier transform of y of t, which is y of f, which is these, uh, this expression over here. So now uh, we get this x, uh, x of t, uh, the x of f convolved with the Fourier transform of cosine 2 pi f c t. Uh, and that happens because multiplication in time domain is convolution in the frequency domain. And we are going to utilize the distributive property of convolution. So x of f convolved with this plus this is basically x of f convolved with this plus x of f convolved with the second term over here. So uh, that results in uh, we can take the half uh, outside the convolution. So it's 1 upon 2 x of f convolved with delta f minus fc. And uh, since, uh, since delta of f or the delta function is the identity for the convolution operation, uh, convolution with the shifted delta simply produces uh, x of f also shifted in the same direction and in the same amount. So we get 1 upon 2 x of f minus fc for this particular convolution and we get here uh, 1 upon 2 x of f plus fc. So we see that uh, the uh, the, the Fourier transform of the product of x of t and cosine 2 pi f c t is the spectrum x of f shifted to the right by f c and scaled by half plus the spectrum of x of f shifted to the left by f c and scaled by half. So we have uh, the baseband signal x of f uh, or the baseband spectrum x of f right shifted by f c and scaled by half and the baseband spectrum x of f or left shifted by fc and scaled by half. So let's see that uh, uh, pictorially. Um, so we have x of t uh, with Fourier transform x of f. So that's the spectrum of the baseband signal as we have seen earlier. It has a bandwidth of w hertz. And the spectrum of cosine 2 pi f c t, we got these uh, the summation of these two shifted deltas. So that's a delta function at f c. The delta f minus f c is nothing but delta of f shifted to the right by f c. So that's delta of f shifted to the right by f c and scaled by half. So it's half delta f minus f c. And the second term here is the delta of f, the, the impulse function or delta function shifted to the left by f c. So we have a delta here at minus f c. And it also has an amplitude of half. So that's our scaling factor of 1 upon 2. So that's the uh, Fourier transform of cosine 2 pi f c t. Now to produce modulation, since we are multiplying in the time domain, the signal x of t and the carrier signal cosine 2 pi f c t, in the frequency domain, uh, which is obtained by performing the Fourier transform, the multiplication corresponds to the convolution between the individual Fourier transforms of the two functions. So x of t has Fourier transform x of f and cosine 2 pi f c t has Fourier transform given by this expression. So we perform convolution between x of f and this. And again, using the distributive property, we have the, we, we, we obtain this expression. And basically, this expression is nothing but the same x of f, the original baseband spectrum x of f, shifted to the right by f c, f minus, uh, minus means right shift, by an amount f c. So we have this x of f shifted to the right, so it's got, it's got right shifted by f c, so it's centered on f c now, instead of being on centered on zero. 
and it is also scaled by a factor of half so the peak amp amplitude which was one here it is now one upon two so we have a, a frequency translation of this component to, by an amount fc uh, at the same time we also have uh, a replica of this uh, baseband spectrum shifted to the left by fc so therefore it is now centered on minus fc and uh, scaled by one upon two as well okay now uh, these uh, th this component which we see on the negative side okay this does not exist in the real world okay real signals do not have negative frequencies uh, it comes as a mathematical convenience because of the use of the complex exponential uh, in our Fourier integral uh, you can refer to my other video on the concept of negative frequencies which are available uh, on my channel uh, for more details about uh, how the negative frequencies appear in our expressions uh, when we are analyzing signals. Uh, but the, the negative frequencies actually do not exist in the real world, but they, they are there out of mathematical convenience. So the, uh, the portion that we are really interested in is basically the, uh, the spectrum on the positive side. But what we notice here is that uh, for the conservation of power, we see, we see that the magnitude uh, is divided half on the positive side of the spectrum and half on the negative side of the spectrum. Okay, so uh, the Fourier transform of the modulated signal is nothing but uh, the uh, the baseband signal uh, shifted to the right by FC, along with the replica of the baseband signal shifted to the left by FC, and both are scaled by a factor of one upon two. And we also notice again that the uh, bandwidth of the baseband signal is W hertz uh, and the bandwidth of the bandpass signal after modulation or after producing the frequency translation is doubled which is 2W hertz. So what we notice here is that uh, modulation produces frequency translation and that means uh, the signal in the baseband has been transformed or converted to a bandpass signal. So it's called baseband to bandpass conversion. And uh, we have understood now uh, in this video uh, the concept of modulation using the uh, property of the Fourier transform, uh, which is multiplication in the time domain corresponds to convolution in the frequency domain. And we also use the fact that uh, the convolution of any signal with the delta function produces the same signal or convolution of any signal with the shifted delta signal produces the same signal also shifted, right? Uh, by using these properties, we are able to uh, show the modulation property and also understand that modulation uh, produces uh, frequency shift or frequency translation resulting in the conversion of the baseband signal to a bandpass signal.